Awesome. I'm good with that. Like, I can tell the time. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be reacting to some Detroit Lions press conferences. We've got to hear from a big three today. Jeffrey Okuda, Amani Oruwariye, and Jamie Collins. Like, hold me back. That's awesome. Plus, a little bit of Matthew Stafford's press conference. We got some good stuff. Let's get it started. No, I got a shout out, Dosa Dia, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know. Dosa Dia, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. It is good to be back and discussing some Detroit Lions. As I mentioned in my last video, well, I would say my first video today, it is Thursday, so that means it is officially week number two, and we are, of course, on to Green Bay. We've been on to Green Bay since, honestly, Monday. So today, we have some takeaways from some players that are going to serve a big role this weekend against the Green Bay Packers, and of course, Matthew Stafford, which we'll get to first. But before we do all that, I first want to give a big shout out to Tom Grassi. You guys know who Tom Grassi is, right? He's, he's the Packers guy. Of course, we're not Packers fans, but you probably know who he is. Dude just hit 100,000 subscribers. He's gigantic. He's absolutely killing it over there. But he actually reached out to me and he had me on his show recently. He uploaded the video today. So if you guys want to see me talking with Tom Grassi, which is just amazing, you guys can go check that video out. It is on his channel. I just wanted to bring this up because I'm super grateful for the opportunity. It was really, really fun. So definitely go check that video out. It's like his Lions and Packers for, uh, preview video. So definitely go check it out if you want to. And also, if you do go and you heard it from me in this video, make sure you go in his comment section and just explode it. Like, hey, Deion sent me here, okay? Hey. I appreciate y'all and shout out to Tom Grassi. Now let's get into today's video. We're going to start off with Matthew Stafford, the Detroit Lions quarterback, Matthew Stafford. This dude right here, all right? Now he's speaking on this Green Bay game. We got to hear him after the Bears game, but of course he wasn't very happy. However, he's on the Green Bay. They got on the Green Bay pretty darn quick. And he said, lucky for us, Green Bay draws our attention very, very quick. And there's multiple reasons for that. One, you're on the road, okay? You're going into Lambeau. Anytime a team plays in Lambeau, it's always a big deal because they're very successful at home. Also, they're a divisional team. Of course, every divisional team is a big game. And finally, it's the Packers. Like, it, it's the Packers and Lions. I mean, it just doesn't get any bigger than that. So, of course, this catches their attention very, very quickly. Last season, they won 13 games, so they're a good team. So, I'm really excited for this game. I know you guys are too. Well, some of you guys. Some of you guys aren't excited for this one. But I'm telling you, we'll be good. We'll be good. Chill. We all right. But anyways, Matthew Stafford spoke on this game a little bit. This one's a little bit older, but I thought I would uh, talk about it because I did just watch it today. I know I'm a little bit behind on this one. But I just watched it today, and I, I got some good takeaways from this one. So, first off, let's start off what he said about Adrian Peterson. He said, well, I was on the field, so I didn't really have to worry about the field. But... When I handed it to him, it looked pretty good, darn good to me. It, it looked good to me. The offensive line was creating holes, and he was hitting them. I think that's the biggest thing, man. He was hitting holes when they were there. This guy just knows how. He just finds the hole. He's got great vision, great balance. Adrian Peterson's that dude. He is that dude. 35 years old, but he's, of course, that guy. And we're actually going to hear about him a little bit later when we get to Jeffrey Okuda's part. When he was asked about the interception, he said, you know, I try to forget every single play. But there's a little extra added motivation when you throw an interception next time you get back on the field because you want to go out there and make a play. And that's what Matthew Stafford talked about here when he threw the interception the very next drive. We took it all the way down the field. It was just a drop pass by DeAndre Swift. We would have won the game. How do you how do you put that put that aside? And does that play even on your mind in the next series? No, uh, not on my mind. Um, obviously, I can't let it happen. Um, been playing this game a long time. I'm, you know, I get the the ball in my hand late in the game. I know my guys trust me. I got to make good decisions with it. Um, not try to do too much and just uh, you know keep keep us moving um but no i mean nobody wants to go out there and drive us down and score more than i do after giving up uh you know a play um like i did so um was motivated obviously as i am every time we take the field and, and i get the ball in my hand but uh knew it was going to be a, a crunch time moment where we needed uh need to drive down there and give ourselves a chance and, and we did that just didn't come away with it but either way man we got it down the field even after that interception so our offense started to click you know they were executing at a high level on that last drive it was just unfortunate it was a drop when he was asked about that drop he said 100 times out of 100 times i would throw it to deandre swift okay he said i have 100 percent confidence in that man so that's good that's good to hear obviously uh building him up i mean that's what you want to do you want to make sure that your players have confidence in you and you have confidence in them because that that just forms a great relationship and it's also big for deandre swift who is a young player to bounce back and it was unfortunate but he did a lot of good things it was just one very unfortunate drop and it came in that moment that's why it was super unfortunate he also said he felt like it took him a little bit too long to settle in last game against chicago and his completion percentage started off kind of rough 
but he got back into it, especially by the second quarter. I mean, he was he was looking fine to me, but he started off a little bit slow. He said, I don't know if that's because I've you know basically been off for a year. I don't know if it's because I've been out for so long because Matthew Stafford's been out for a long time. I and mean, he hasn't been on the field since the first half of last season, or if it was just because he wasn't able to get into the flow. Either way, he's hoping that doesn't happen. He's going to do his best not to let that happen in week two. I think a little bit a little bit of it is because he's been off for so long. I mean, not only did he miss half the season, but again, like, like every team, there was no preseason. There was none of that. So I think it was a little bit of that as well. We'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully, he can come out a little bit uh, quicker for the Detroit Lions against the Green Bay Packers because that's going to be super, super important to get a lead against Green Bay. I mean, we don't want to get behind against the Green Bay Packers. And also, with TJ Hawkinson, he said, look, TJ Hawkinson, we drew up some plays for him. He took advantage of all his opportunities. He said that touchdown throw, look, he's probably the most covered guy on the field, but I just found a way to jam it in there. Matthew, you could tell the people the truth, all right? We, we all want the truth. The truth is, he knew TJ Hawkinson was on my fantasy team, and I hyped him up in my preview video. He had to give him a touchdown. He had to give him a touchdown because he wanted to make me look good. I appreciate that, Matthew. You know, you can tell people the truth. First off, Jamie Collins. Jamie Collins, man. Mister, I'm thrown out because I touch referees with my helmet. That sounds weird. I know it sounds weird. You can watch it. It just, it sounds a lot weirder when you say it like that. He said it was unintentional. You know, if you know me, there's, I would definitely not do something like that on purpose. He said he completely disagrees with the fact that he was thrown out. And he also didn't even know he made contact with the referee. So he didn't know really what happened. He was just trying to demonstrate something. And, you know, it was uh, unfortunately unlucky. He was very unfortunate for the Lions because we could have definitely used him on the stretch. And he said that it was his fault. You know, he was selfish. Not being on the field at the end hurt him. Watching, you know, us give up that lead. He would have liked to be out there and try to do something about it. It was the main thing going through my head, man, knowing that I couldn't be out there with those guys and just trying to, you know, just trying to fight through it. You know, watching it on TV, you know, watching those guys battle, knowing that I'm right there and I couldn't do nothing about it. But, yeah, I mean, when you get thrown out like that, I don't know, man. It really does think to get him thrown out. It was just a weird way. It was like a normal, like, oh, yeah, he got in a fight with something. Nah. He said that, and the referee like got touched in the stomach. It was, I, <laughs> sorry, I, it's still funny. I, I just think it's still funny. But either way, now he knows. You know, he says, you live and you learn. And that kind of goes with the entire team, right? You live and you learn. Yes, last week hurt, and the loss definitely hurt. But it is one game. It's not the end of the world. There's 15 left. So we got to go out there and take advantage of those 15 games. And at the end of his little press conference, I don't know what was going on, but there was like, a little back and forth between him and one of the writers. And I I was just like, what is going on? Jamie said he thought he was lying. I thought it was kind of funny. It was kind of awkward too. So I'm going to show that clip. Did you get fined and you're appealing? Or did you just get fined and you're not appealing? Because you just said yes. So I want to make sure we get that right. Why you want to know though? I mean, because we want to know. It's going to come out anyway, whether you got fined. All right. All right, we'll wait. I don't know. I haven't heard anything. You just said you did. I haven't heard anything. I don't know. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, guys. Jamie, thanks. I think I'm lying. <laughs> on to Monty Oruare, man. The former Penn State cornerback that was really good last season. He was actually pretty darn good in week one against Chicago Bears as well. So we got to hear from Amani, who's going to be like our top cornerback going this game. I mean, he probably was in week one as well. But without, with the chance that Desmond Trufant's not there, we know he's going to have to take on a huge role heading into this Green Bay game. But you know what? He's shown some good things against Green Bay. I feel like he played really well in the second matchup against Green Bay. He got some opportunities there. And he also had an interception on Aaron Rodgers in that game. He said there's no negative energy right now in the locker room with the injuries that they do have. He said everybody's just trying to be the next man up. And they're trying to beat the Packers no matter who is out there every day in practice. I like that. I like, I like how he says that. We're just, we're just attacking every day. Um, you know, trying to beat Green Bay at practice every single day, every single play. Um, and whoever's in there, next man up. Um, is ready and you know Jeff he, he's a you know he's he, we brought him here for a reason he, he knows what he's doing he's gonna be ready he's gonna be uh, prepared um, and he's gonna be ready to go also he says Jeff was brought here for a reason he knows what he's doing and he's gonna be ready to go Jeff was brought here for a reason okay I see because we know Jeffrey Okuda is going to be making his debut on Sunday I know the excitement is in here I'm I'm stoked, man. I am super excited to see Jeffrey Okuda. I mean, maybe I'm more excited than I should be. I, I just, I really want to see this guy out there. I want to see what this guy's about. I know he's not going to be perfect. He's going to make mistakes, but hey, every cornerback does. Go out there and do what he does best. Just compete, 
challenge receivers, make plays. That's what he, you know, that's what we was brought here to do. And I'm just excited to see Jeffrey Okuda on the field for the first time. They have to make more plays heading into this Green Bay game. All right, now finally, Jeffrey Okuda himself. We got to hear from the man that's going to make his debut, and he seems super excited. I mean, Jeffrey Okuda is very, very even keel, but this moment doesn't seem too big for him. I mean, obviously talking is one thing, but it just you can kind of just feel the presence off him that he doesn't feel like this is too big of a moment. They asked him how he felt about facing Aaron Rodgers multiple times and if that was going to intimidate him. And he said, well, I wouldn't say intimidate him, but it's actually kind of awesome. It's pretty awesome that I'm going to get the lineup against, you know, Aaron Rodgers and the Devontae Adams in my first game. Intimidating at all, do you think? Uh, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say intimidating. I think that it would just be, for me, it would be just pretty... Pretty, pretty awesome, actually, to you know, line up against you know Aaron Rodgers. He said, I'm excited. I've reached out to other rookies, other Ohio State players. Like, hey, what was your experience like in your first game? He doesn't, I mean, he doesn't seem phased at all, like, who he's going against. And I don't think he should be, all right? You were the third pick in the draft. You're talented. You're just as talented as the other guys across from you. So go out there, ball out, go do your thing. He also said that he does reach out when it comes to his, you know, kind of process. He get ready for a week in a, in a weekend game. Is that he reached out to players like Aqib Tlaib, Stefan Gilmore, obviously the best cornerback in the league. Reached out to those guys and ask them what they felt about the receiving core that he was going against. That's cool. I never really thought of that. I don't know if everybody does that, but that sounds like a really smart thing to do. So this is really cool. Jeffrey Okuda is putting a lot of time in here watching a lot of film with the jersey numbers because we know he got number 30. He said, well, he was gonna go and get 28, but then we signed Adrian Peterson and he was like, you know what? Nah, I ain't messing with that. This is a Hall of Famer. You can have number 28. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was just kind of the last one. I mean, uh, I thought about getting 28, but then when I was about to tell him, he signed Adrian. So it's was like, uh, I don't have any argument about that. That's the Hall of Famer. Says in training camp, his confidence has went up every day. We know he missed some time with an injury. He just tries to go out there and get 1% better every day in practice, which I thought was funny because I know Matt Patricia says it a lot. So I'm sure he's got it from Patricia. I don't know. Maybe everybody just says that. I think he got that from Matt Patricia though. So it was just something little that I, that I took away from it. I don't know why. I just thought I'd bring that up. But he's excited for Sunday's matchup. Wow. Uh, I think as a as a cornerback, I would hope that you'd welcome any challenge, uh, no matter how big it is, how small it is, and you'd approach it the same. So I think that on Sunday, I'm re really excited. You know, uh, go to my first NFL game. You know, so that that that'd be a pretty cool experience. Never really been to an NFL game, so just to get get that crossed off my list uh, i think it'd be pretty cool and he was also not at the chicago bears game so this will be his first nfl game i'm pretty sure it's the first one heck he's never even been to an nfl game to watch it his first nfl game is going to come playing it imagine that like i've been to a i've been to a pretty good amount of games watching them his first one's like oh yeah we're playing we're, no you're actually gonna play could you imagine you show up to a game thinking about to watch hey you're playing like obviously he's not in that situation but it, anyways man that is the takeaways that we have today i am so excited for sunday we're ready to get this thing started, man. It, it can't be Sunday soon enough. All right, we got bounce back week, hashtag pack week. And are you going to check out Thursday Night Football? Let me know in the comments section below. Are you watching Thursday Night Football tonight? Also, go check out my gaming channel, Dose Be Gaming, to see some skits. Thank you, Prep, for watching. And I'm out. Look at all these cool people. Look at all these cool Hall of Fame, All Pro, and patrons. You guys are so awesome. Look how interesting... That's an interesting name. I've never seen one like that. I'm not saying that one out loud. We got some cool stuff here, man. I appreciate all of you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys want to be part of this? Click the join button. I appreciate you guys. Look, man, you guys are cool, man. I see you. Oh, I see you. <laughs> You're not sneak. I see you down there, my boy.